What's up, everybody? Hey, this is Phil from Walmart, Right Lane Drugging, coming at you. It is Sunday, 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 fun day. So, where's Wally? Where's Wally tonight? So, I left you last night. I was in Nyack on my way to, that's right, Lincoln and then Marysville. So, I got those two stores knocked out rather quickly, actually. I had set my ETD for 1800 I don't know what I was thinking, um, but uh, I set my ETD for 1800 and um, at the second store is when I decided I was going to go ahead and change that ETD so that when I got to McCarran, I had a load. So get this, I changed my ETD to 445 so an hour and 15 minutes off. Well, I ended up leaving McCarran even earlier than that. I think I left it, oh gosh, come on. Let me see here, overview, overview. Driving, 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 driving. Driving. I left McCarran at 1559. So I'm still like another 45 minutes ahead of schedule. I love it when a plan comes together. So, um, yeah, I got into McCarran. Uh, gosh, when did I get into McCarran? I got into McCarran at 1512, and I got out of there at 1559. Not bad, right? Not bad, not bad, not bad. 47 minutes, is that? So that's about an average. You got to think, you got to fuel you've got to use the restroom you've got to get your paperwork you got to park your empty you got to get your lead or your your lead you got to get your outbound load and then you got to set everything in the computer then you got to go up to the gates and uh, get out of there so 47 minutes gate to gate is not all that bad thinking you know the size of the yard and everything else so I like to get in and out of there a little bit faster, but 47 minutes, I'll take it. So I got uh, all the way to McCarran and I didn't have a dispatch. It wasn't until I actually got to the fuel island that my dispatch came across. And the funny thing is, I got to start thinking about winning the lotto because when I start thinking about something, it happens. And I didn't even say it out loud to myself. I just thought it. I'm like, where will they send me? I wonder, I, they haven't sent me up this way in a while. And I haven't gone that way in a while. So who knows? They might send me anywhere. And so what I was thinking is, in my head, oh, you know what? I haven't been up towards Ukiah in a while or, or that area. And I haven't been to this other store. I haven't been to Richmond in a while. I haven't been to Vallejo in a while. Sure enough, guess what? My load is going to Clear Lake, then to Ukiah, then to Windsor, then to Vallejo. So basically I'm doing a big loop back down towards the Bay Area. Um, yeah, I'm not too thrilled about it, but uh, you know, hey, it gives me some mileage and everything else and hopefully I can knock these stores out rather quickly and um, get back get another load and get some extra miles in as well so I ended up today with 509 miles and I shut down early I had to shut down early because well I didn't have to I mean I guess I have to because they wouldn't accept it the load isn't due till tomorrow and I'm here tonight they said their freezer is full, and I don't know how that's going to change in 10 hours. But you never know, they might have a shift come on, they go put stuff out, and they now have room in the freezer for the three pallets I brought. But uh, I got five total pallets, two dairy, three frozen for this store. And so I'm in Clear Lake, California. I had planned on overnighting here anyway, because I knew I was going to have over 500 miles and I really, I'm kind of, I was short on any more drive time hours anyway. 
Um, well, I might have made it to Ukiah. Ukiah is about 60 something miles, I think, from here. Let's see, what did I say? 61 miles from this store um, is what it shows. Now, I have an hour and 45 minutes left on my drive time, and at the time I had, you know, probably two hours left on my 14. So I could have, could have probably made it to Ukiah if they would have unloaded me tonight and I wanted to brave through it and do it. Um, the thing about driving this direction to Clear Lake and then over to Ukiah, it, it's a lot of slow going. It, and it's, when I say slow going, it's like 35, 45. Sometimes you're getting up to 50 miles an hour. Uh, because you're going through the mountains to it's kind of like going 299 uh, over to Eureka and then up to um, Crescent City but I don't think it's as bad as that but at night it gets kind of eh. and and um, so you come up I-5 to Highway 20 you take Highway 20 West and then you get to a, a fork in the road, basically. And large trucks have to go a different route. You can't keep going 20 through to the other side. You have to actually um, go south a little bit towards Clear Lake and then back up on 29. So, because that's for the larger trucks. So it would have taken me a little bit around anyway to get there um, but I'm already close to the 29 now where I'm at but I ended up with 509 miles and I'm okay with that in the gosh 12 hours I worked today so that's not bad that's not bad at all uh, the good thing is I had, you know, those two stores, then I had the arrive drop in Hook in McCarran, bringing it up to six activities, and then I got the arrive for coming here because I arrived. And so that is another activity on to today, bringing my total up over $400 for today, which is what I was shooting for. That's what I really wanted. Um, was to get a 400 plus day and I did and Saturdays and Sundays guys Saturdays and Sundays those are the days that you make uh, make your money and um, I mean, not to say I can't get a $400 day on, on a weekday um, it just depends we'll see what tomorrow brings because I'll have the live unload from here that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. If I get another activity, nine, possibly nine activities, and depending on how many miles I can get in tomorrow, I might still get another $400 day. Just depends. I might have to get a few more miles to make up for that, but um, I'll have two more activities. So it might, it might end up another $400 day tomorrow. Uh, with all the stores I have to drop off at because I've got it four stops on this this load so I've seen a lot of wildlife today and they weren't alive and makes you go I, I'd like to see the vehicle that hit it because these these uh, carcasses are totally off to the side of the road. So how do they get to the side of the road after being hit? Were they hit in the middle of the road? Were they hit in, you know, just on the side? And what kind of damage happens when a animal gets in your way? Now, I watched a video on YouTube where a driver had struck an elk and it was like a 600-pound elk, I think the, the story was. And he got it in the right corner and then ended up swerving off the road. 
all I could say guys is you gotta you gotta hold steady you know it's gonna cause some damage in the front end but when you start to try to swerve to avoid them I I think you're just asking for more problems than if you would have just stayed straight and held your held your wheel now in this case um, the the report was that it got up underneath I think he swerved and didn't take it straight on and tried to go around or try to swerve away and it, and it caught the right front corner when doing so it pushed it and went into the steering um, the tie rods and everything else and that's what caused him to swerve off the side of the road because he lost control because he the animal went underneath and then hit that and caused more damage so swerving maybe it might not be the best thing um, always wear your seat belt you know I don't know how you guys are but I'm religious about wearing our seat belts ours are on some tractors on the new tractors I think they're orange seat belts these are black it's not so bad but the orange ones, hey, it is what it is. It's a seatbelt, it's gonna protect you. The other thing is we drive in Walmart, we drive around solo in here, right? I have a bunk, but I drive solo. This was a team that struck this animal. And luckily, luckily, the guy or other driver, the co-driver, I don't know if it was a guy or girl, was strapped in into his bunk or her bunk and therefore didn't go flying out the window or out you know into the driver's seat or anything anything like that when they went off the side of the road so if you are a team driver I know it might not be the most comfortable thing but you got to use those restraints when you're going down the road and as the the driver you should be telling your co-driver hey you got your restraints on because while you put a lot of trust in that other driver things like that can happen and somebody could pull out of in front of you at any given time and if you're in the back sleeping especially if you're on the top bunk you're gonna come flying right out right so you don't want that to happen so make sure you're using those restraints when you're sleeping in the bunks that'll save your life I've never personally had to use them because I never am in here when it's moving but if they were moving I would make sure the restraints are working properly and everything else so that's where Wally's at we're in clear length I got uh, security keeping an eye on me all night looks like they're just gonna keep doing u-turns uh, in the back air receiving area here now I tried to get this unloaded tonight it was just a no-go I wasn't gonna go anywhere else after this but it was a no-go uh, they wouldn't undo it so I said well then I'm staying in the dock because I'll be up at 730 in the morning and you can unload me then so we'll see what happens there but uh, yeah, woohoo! Hey, if you guys have any topic comments or topics that you want me to cover or ask me questions, ask questions. I will try to answer them the best I can. And if it's worthy of a, a topic, safety or whatever or otherwise, please leave it in the comments. I'll, I'll, I'll try to tie it in here. I'm doing this for me and for you. So, hope we can both get stuff out of this. I know I've looked back on my previous videos when I first started doing this. I was pretty stiff, right guys? If you watch one of my first videos, I was stiff. I was like, uh, 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 uh. Now I'm just relaxed, I'm feeling good. Um, I'm okay with this now. Uh, maybe one day I'll be able to, okay to walk around in the store while filming. I don't know, but um, 
I know a lot of YouTubers that just walk around with the camera all the time, filming everything, talking to the camera, and people are probably looking at him like, oh, he's just YouTubing. So I got more comfortable with it. Um, I think it flows a lot better now than it did when I first started. And I can only imagine what it's gonna be like in, as I get more experience doing it. Uh, if you have any tips that you want to share with me if you're a youtuber or you know somebody that does YouTube or you know a good editing uh, program that I could use on the phone I have an Android so that I can use on the phone because I edit these I don't have a laptop sitting in here editing like transferring the data to the laptop then editing then uploading into YouTube I edit everything on here and usually I do it in one take so you never see, you don't see me going, oh, let me do it again and start over. What you see is what you get. I don't I do not do multiple takes. The only thing you'll see is like if I'm setting up for a backing video, that's my my backing video. That, that I didn't go, up, oh, I didn't like how I backed that time, let me pull back out and do it again. No, that's one time, that's it. And, and one shot, that's it. If I don't like it, guess what? You're not gonna see it, right? So uh, I just won't put it in there. But uh, each of these are then just spliced together as I go through the day when I'm doing my like, daily kind of one. At the end of the night when I'm talking like right now, it's one shot and done. I don't, I don't try to edit this out and be PC or, or anything else. I, I just want you guys to see me and how it is here. So, but again, if you have any ideas, go ahead and let me know. Um, I know I got a comment earlier, somebody applied, and again, if you apply and and you're using me as a reference, even if you're not using me as a reference, I, you know, it is what it is, but hit me up, let me know where you applied, and if you don't hear anything back in, in any short order, email me, you know, instant, send me a message, and then I can send you my email and you can send me your information that way i can talk to the management on my end to see if they can look into it for you but if i don't know where you applied and uh, your full details i can't ask any questions so please if you're applying especially if you're using my uh, driver number as a referral and you're not hearing anything back let me know and also in the description down below is the recruiter's phone number and she is in a specific region but she could put you through to the recruiter in your region and that might help the process as well so take a look in the description down below for the recruiter's phone number email and contact for that info as well all right guys hey i'm gonna get to bed early tonight so i can get up early i've been getting up at you know 8 30 or so now i gotta get up and get going uh, so I can get on road by 7.30 tomorrow or knocking on their door at 7.30 tomorrow morning to get me unloaded so I can get going. But anyway, for Phil from Walmart, right lane trucking, stay safe, stay, stay safe, guys.